It's Dr. Thompson. Um, we're, I'm doing a recording today for ATTR 210, Basic Skills in Athletic Training, and today's topic is principles in taping and wrapping. Here's our Canvas course, and we want to go ahead and go to the introductory module. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's not introduction. The Injury Evaluation Taping Principles module and get those PowerPoint notes. So here's the principles of taping and wrapping notes. And I would certainly recommend that you have an electronic copy of those to uh, glance at as well as to take some notes as we're going through today's presentation. What I'll be doing today is going over a PowerPoint. So most of, t of this um, uh, video is going to be a lecture capture where I'm talking and talking about PowerPoint slides. It'll basically be a narrated PowerPoint. And then I also have my trusty dusty athletic training kit here. Okay, right there. And we will um, look at some of the supplies that I have in here. All right, so let's get started on the notes. And we want to go back to there. All right, so again, today's topic, principles of taping and wrapping. This is based on uh, Prentice Chapter 8, so it's a good idea to have read this chapter ahead of time. Our objectives describe how the athletic trainer should use taping and wrapping techniques in clinical practice, demonstrate the ability to apply elastic wraps to provide support, limit range of motion, hold a protected pad in place for a body part. The demonstration aspect will come when we get to do our lab, when we meet face-to-face, -face, um, but I am going to describe how to do that to, in today's recording. Um, we're going to identify the properties of elastic and non-elastic adhesive tape and also explain the process of applying and removing adhesive tape. Okay, so let's talk about the topic of bandaging. When you put <coughs> a bandage on a wound, you are actually um, using that bandage to hold a dressing in place. So sometimes bandages are sterile, very, very clean, um, and sometimes they don't have to be because what actually touches the patient's wound, if we're talking about uh, a skin laceration, for example, or tissue laceration, what touches the wound should be sterile, but what touches the wound is actually called a dressing. So bandages then would hold a dressing in place. Um, so they can contribute to recovery. They can actually, if they're applied incorrectly, hamper healing and hamper recovery and be really uncomfortable for the patient. They should be applied firmly so that they stay in place, but we still have to allow circulation, which is a real challenge. We need to be sure that we are monitoring circulation and sensation after we put bandages on our patients. So the use is to cover up wounds, secure compressive protective padding, and also to provide support. Okay, materials that we use for bandaging, um, certainly gauze. Um, gauze we typically think of as being sterile pads for wounds, um, but we can also have roller gauze that holds dressing in place or also provides um, uh, padding for the prevention of blisters. We have cotton cloth. Uh, in class, we will do a cotton cloth ankle wrap. In first aid class, perhaps you use triangular um, or cravat bandages to uh, hold splints in place to make slings and things of that nature. And then we have elastic bandages, which sometimes we call ace wraps. Uh, they are extensible. They're very useful. I put that on my list of essential equipment that you need to have to practice athletic training. Um, they allow for movement. They can provide um, support and compression that allows for wound healing as far as skin lesions, you know, like lacerations and abrasions, but they can also help with healing of sprained ankles and, and uh, sprained knees and, and strains and so forth. And the last type is cohesive bandage. So um, the cohesive bandage is something that the term cohesive means that the bandage sticks to itself, that the real advantage of it is it doesn't stick to the patient's skin. So it doesn't need, uh, it doesn't leave rather uh, adhesive on the patient's skin. It's much easier to remove. So let's look in my kit then and see what of these materials I actually have. All right, so looking in here, digging around a little bit, okay. I have this green uh, cohesive bandage, so I can wrap this around my finger, for example, and it doesn't stick to my finger, doesn't stick to my finger at all, okay? Um, this is in green because that's the color of Amelia County, and that's where I did some uh, athletic training last semester. And then another type of tape we have, this is a nice dirty roll of white tape, okay? So this is our white, regular old athletic trainer's tape. It's inch and a half cotton cloth tape. All right, and what else do we have some? Uh, here's an elastic tape right here. Okay, so we haven't talked about types of tape yet, but this is a super sticky and very tough elastic. It does stretch, um, but it's really uh, very, very strong. And this is a four inch width of tape. So you can see how wide that is. And um, I actually don't have ace wraps in here because we didn't have any at the high school, but we have some pre-wrap here. We'll talk about that when we get to taping supplies. 
And then it's also important to recognize that all of these tapes come in different widths. So here's a one inch variety of, um, sometimes we call it Coband or PowerFlex. And again, it doesn't stick to the skin. It's not sticky at all back here, um, but it does stick to itself. Okay, um, gauze. We have bulk gauze right here. And this would be an example of a wound, put this over there. There we go. wound dressing. Okay, so we're gonna set, stick this directly on the wound. This one's probably used for cleaning up wounds and not actually addressing because it's not sterile. And then we can look up here. There's a sterile four by four. So this is another example of an actual wound dressing. Um, this one would be clean and appropriate to put on an open wound. So the most common thing that I would use to um, put that, to hold that gauze in place would be uh, a little bit of pre-wrap, okay? And then some white tape, uh, possibly also, so pre-wrap and white tape, possibly also um, the Coban works really well for that. All right, back we go to our lecture. All right, moving on. Um, so elastic bandages uh, come in a variety of lengths and a variety of widths. Um, in our lab, I'll show you a bunch of examples of these. We have them ranging from a two inch all the way up to a six inch width and um, six and 10 yards. 10 yards is a very long wrap. Sometimes that's necessary to do things like shoulder spikas and hip spikas. And then the, um, the 10 yard length would be more appropriate if you're just gonna wrap an ankle or something that's a little bit smaller. So a variety of widths and a variety of lengths are appropriate because you have a variety of uses for elastic bandages uh, in your practice of athletic training. The elastic bandages need to be rolled when stored. I think that um, athletic trainers sort of major in rolling wraps uh, and tearing tape. Those are two really basic skills that we do every single day. The bandage that you use should be free from wrinkles and seams and imperfections that could irritate the skin. Um, and it also should be applied in a way with, that has nice even tension and no gaps in it for the same reason, to give good support and also to prevent irritating the skin. Okay, um, We'll go over this in class. We're going to hold that bandage in the preferred hand um, with the loose end extending from the bottom of the roll. So this is kind of like that roll of uh, toilet paper um, conversation. Should the toilet paper come off the bottom of the roll or the top? You're going to have your elastic bandage um, positioned and your tape is, I recommend this as well. Um, no, your pre-wrap, sorry. Pre-wrap comes off the bottom of the roll. The tape probably comes off the top. Um, but you're holding that bandage with the um, wrap coming off the bottom of the roll because that's going to help you control the tension and control how it lays down on the skin. Um, the back uh, surface of the loose end should lay against the uh, skin surface. That means that you just lay it on gently and then go ahead and wrap it one time around to sort of stabilize it and then you can put as much pressure or tension as you'd like. Um, it should be fairly consistent so that it's comfortable for the patient and we want to overlap that um, wrap Typically, you're applying an elastic bandage from distal to proximal. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Um, it depends on the application purpose, like what are you doing it for. If it's to su uh, provide support, it doesn't really matter. But if you're really trying to get a good even compression to get swelling out of a joint, you need a little more pressure to the distal end and a little more to the proximal. So when we get to do this in class, I'll definitely explain that concept again. Okay, the body part should be wrapped in a position of maximum contraction. Imagine that you're doing a calf uh, wrap for like a gastroc strain and you want to have that patient make the muscle as big as they can so that um, the, when the person starts walking around it's not too tight. Um, the more turns, with moderate, more turns with moderate tension are more appropriate than a fewer turns with maximum tension. Easier probably to explain this but um, you want to make sure that you're using a moderate tension and use multiple uh, wraps around a body part um, in order to assure, ensure nice even tension and that you don't get it too tight. So if you did just a few wraps around the calf, for example, and they were really tight, you have a high chance of it being really uncomfortable for your patient and possibly also cutting off the circulation. Okay. Each turn should overlap by half the width of the elastic bandage to prevent separation. That could also be uncomfortable for the skin. It can pinch the skin if that happens. Um, and you have to worry about it not being even pressure so that it's not giving the support um, or the compression that you want. Um, definitely we need to monitor that circulation whenever we put an elastic bandage on. Okay, um, So elastic wraps can be used for foot and ankle spica. We're going to do this one in class um, for our next lab experience. Um, it can be a spiral bandage um, like a spica. Uh, that would be for example the hip or the shoulder. 
Um, and uh, so in the hip, we're actually talking about the groin support. We needed to do a figure eight for the elbow so that they can still, we can still allow some motion, um, but control some swelling and give some support to the elbow. Um, when you're using that roller gauze, the hand and wrist figure eight tape is a good one to, to know how to do. Um, and also, of course, the, the cloth ankle wrap. That one's also called the Louisiana wrap, and we'll be doing that one in class. Okay. So this is what that elastic bandage technique looks like, and we will do this again in our next lab experience. Um, we'll do it for the uh, foot and ankle as well as for the calf.